Hello world of YouTube and welcome to another episode of Hours Movie Reviews, where I review movies that you guys suggest I go to the movies and see or I feel like discussing. And this time around, I'm doing a documentary. First on the channel, something I haven't done before, even though I do love documentaries. I really I really enjoy documentaries as long as they're not, like, incredulously boring. Um, if it has a topic that I'm genuinely interested in, I really want to see it. And this is one of those films that I had seen, or that I, that I literally just finished watching. Um, it's Indie Game the Movie. Uh, and it follows the uh, the guy that made Braid, Jonathan Blow, uh, the two guys that made Super Meat Boy, uh, Edmund and Tommy something or something or something or other, I don't know their last names, and uh, the main guy behind Braid, Phil Fish, and um, or the main guy behind Fez, Phil Fish. And this tackled a side of any development I knew was, I, I assumed was there, but I didn't really know was there and it kind of delves into the to the the mindset of, of some of the developers especially for these games which are three either hype for or generally well received games i've played these games i played braid and i loved it i played super meat boy the demo i still really want to buy it i haven't yet even though i know it's a really good game and i, I loved playing the demo and so i haven't bought it yet and uh, Fez, which I'm playing on the channel now. And that's that was one of the big selling points for me to see this movie. Just because I got to see um, Jonathan Blow talk about his experience and making the game and post all that stuff. And same with Super Meat Boy. But to see Fez. And I actually learned a lot about all three of these games. I didn't know that Fez had been in development for as long as it was. Um, see, because literally I had seen something about the game. Instantly wanted to play it. And I'm doing so now. And I think it's interesting because... All three of these developers kind of are tackling their games that are fairly similar. They're all platformers with some puzzle elements in there. But they're all doing it very differently for, for, with different mindsets behind it. And I think that's what's really interesting about this movie. You have someone like Jonathan Blow who's making something to kind of make as an artistic reflection of, a, reflection of himself. He's making something that's, that's very personal and... and it, he discusses his reactions after the game had been released and seeing reviews, and while the reviews were very positive, he feels like, even at that point, people don't get it. Which I know people on the internet know, you know, a lot of people that have seen, them, uh, seen I guess, Jonathan Blow, I guess, realize that he is the way he is. And um, I thought it was interesting because I, I can get why he, he felt the way he did. He really, he wished that there was someone out there who could who can connect with the game on a deeper level than just, hey, this game has fantastic art. The platforming is very crisp, and it's really challenging to the mind with all these puzzles and stuff. I get that. And I think that that's... It's interesting to see that, that he is so dedicated to ha hoping his message is seen that it gets him so down, even though the game is is wildly loved and revered. And I, I just... I thought, it was, I thought it was interesting. I really thought that... He was a he felt like an artist in the true form, and in contrast, the guys of Super Meat Boy, you know, who made a game that kind of reflects their their nostalgia of playing classic games and wanting to create their own in a sense. Uh, and to see this game blow up, it outsold Braid. It was a huge game. Super Meat Boy. I know you all know who what Super Meat Boy is if you play games. And uh, to see them just like get so hyped about it, and it's and it's interesting. And I actually I'd love to see. Um, what Phil Fish thinks of Fez's release now that it's out and it's been out because the game is is so different from the other two. Like Braid is a bit calm, but it still has its its point. It has its end. It has a story to tell. And Super Meat Boy is very fast paced. It's very energetic. It's very flashy and glossy, but it's still very cutesy and quirky and indie. It seems. But Fez is like this this different beast. It's like this soft. Um, tonal game i mean the soundtrack is very calm and serene for most of the time and there's this underlying mystery behind it but it's just kind of a it's just kind of a a painting it's just kind of a thing you experience you know it's just like a, it's just like a walk in the park it's a game that you kind of take at your own pace which is interesting it's just kind of a it's kind of a thing that's been building to this it's because it's been in development for five six years before it came out this year and to see the kind of stress that that can put on someone, because I mean, the whole time in the in the movie, he's kind of half defending himself, and it, it's kind of sad because, I mean, I'm someone I love Fez, I'm loving the game, and as we because I didn't really know the story about it, but I mean, even if I did, I'd be very pleased with it because this game is so interesting and and, and fantastic. It's my desktop is Fez, my my desktop wallpaper is Fez. 
I mean, I, sorry, I, I, I love Fez. It's a fantastic game. Sorry, I'm, I can rant on about that game and, and uh, all day and, and, you know, Braid and all this stuff. I can rant about the games, but the film itself does a really good job of getting to the personalities and shows that the personalities kind of reflect in the game. Like, the developers really have their personal stamp on these games, you know? And I think it was well done. It was well shot. There's some really good uh, shots of the cities that it takes place in uh, California and South Carolina and, and, and Canada. Because the guy that makes Fez is Canadian. I didn't know that either. That's cool. Sorry. Uh, you know I love Canada. You know I love Canada. I'm a huge Canadian fan. I love Canada. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really good documentary. If you like documentaries and you like indie games and you like something that's very inspiring, see this movie. It's very... I mean, there's moments where you kind of... I, I, I sympathize with these guys because they're, they're someone who wants to accomplish an artistic goal and they, they're either hitting roadblocks or they're, they're finding problems with it. And, I mean, there's a scene where uh, Phil Fish is at PAX with Fez and it, 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 it sucks to see what happens. And, and then it, it gets better and you, get, you really start to, you start to feel for this guy. You really start to feel for these guys by the end of the movie. And I did... And uh, I was I was glad I was glad that I really enjoyed this and I, and I was glad that I got to see this and that I got to to see more into the minds of the people that, who do make games that that may be indie or just make games that I love. So yes, go see this movie. Go see this documentary. You can get it online. It has a website. I'll link to the website. It is also on Netflix. If you have Netflix, go check it out. But anyway, I have been Valor Rack. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this review. Next one should be one full of the Cougar's Nest, but I don't know because there may be something else that pops up that I just want to see and talk about. Anyway, I've been Valorak. You guys have been in situations. I will see you another day.